Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Today we are making a toilet paper roll junk journal. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial. I have all the steps written down here to make it nice and easy and simple. In all my years of crafting, I have never used toilet paper rolls because of the cringe factor. I'm not sure why I had the cringe factor because after making these, there's absolutely no cringe factor involved. There are some other cringe factors involved, such as high heels and crocs, and if you keep watching, you'll know exactly what I mean. All right, let me just quickly show you what this is all about, and then we're going to move into the tutorial. So here we have a toilet paper roll junk journal. This is the one that we make in this tutorial, and here is the little journal. It lives in there. There's a little something in there as well. And as I mentioned, we do everything step by step, uh, including making the journal. All right, let's begin. These instructions will be up on screen throughout the video, as well as at the end of the video, you'll be able to take a screenshot. So there's no need to manically write notes down. All right, now let's begin. Step number one is to open the roll and we're doing a straight vertical cut to try and get it as straight as possible. Something like this rather than, you know, crooked like this. You don't need to measure anything. Just do a nice straight cut. And there we go, step one complete. Step number two is the cover roll with paper of choice. I have used book pages for all of mine and that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial, but you can use absolutely anything you have on hand. The objective here is to cover both the outside and the inside. So we're hiding all traces of the toilet paper roll. It's up to you if you wanna do, I mean, you don't have to do both, but in this tutorial, we're going to do both and we're starting with the outside. Lies, we're starting with the inside. So I'm going to work on this section first and I have basically picked out a book page as you can see here. I'm gonna apply some glue stick directly onto the book page. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply some glue on the inside here. While I'm working with my paper roll, I don't want to flatten it out because I don't want any creases. If I was to try and flatten this out, you can see over here already, it's trying to kind of bend out of shape. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but if you try and do it at home, you'll see what I mean. So next thing I'm applying glue all over inside. Basically, I want that book page on the inside to not have any air bubbles or to lift. So I've got glue sort of all over, but I'm just going to use my finger to spread it all the way to all the edges. So now I have glue all over this and I have glue stick on this. And now I'm going to place this inside just like this. And the important thing is that I have a little bit of book page on all four sides. So I probably could have used a bigger book page because it's not giving me much over here but that's okay I can work with that and also at this point I'm checking that the writing is straight because I don't want kind of crooked writing so I'm just you can see here that's crooked so I'm just gonna straighten it out a little bit just like that perfect and now again without flattening out the tube I'm simply just going to make sure that that glue and that book page is perfectly adhered. I might use a tool like this to, you know, just to make sure. Throughout the whole process, we're trying to keep this curvature. So you can check, you can sort of see when you look from up above, if everything is glued down correctly. Excellent. And now I'm going to wrap this all around. So I'm just gonna cut the corners off. I'm leaving a tiny little bit of space here just like that and now we're going to wrap so we want the reason why i'm doing all of this is to have perfectly sealed edges you can see this perfectly sealed all around and that's why we're wrapping here because look at these corners why am i all the way up there you see that nice and neat we want neat well i want neat so that's why we're doing all this wrapping and being pedantic so i've applied glue just on that edge and i'm just going to glue it down straight away just like that it would have been nice if i gave myself a little bit more to work with here but it just so happens that this book that i am using is this size and oops i'm gonna put that back and i'm just gonna make do with what i have all right now we 
go over to the other side and do the same thing over here and just make sure that's kind of glued down and staying in place before you move along to the next step I'm just going to bring these corners in like that so that when I wrap I have nice edges and I'm going to do that on all four corners so I'm kind of pressing that down so then when this comes down over the top it's a nice neat edge but I also like to push this in a little bit all right so now at this step you can see everything is nicely sealed now this is going to be a little bit awkward because i have to apply glue up the top and bring this over the top while my piece is curved but i've done it before and i'm gonna do it again so apply glue and now bring this over the top and now it's going to start doing funny things you can see here kind of starting to look a little bit deformed that's all good because all we need to do is glue it down glue it down make sure the edges are okay and then up here just straighten everything out maybe use a bone folder i mean you really don't have to go to this much effort you don't even have to cover the inside you can just do the outside and you're done it really depends on how much effort you want to put in all right so that's done you can see that edge there what i was talking about before and now we're going to repeat on this side we're just going to do that and then again have a little play so i just like to sort of push it push it push it so that's fine we're just smoothing everything out you might want to do this with a few pieces of paper rather than just one piece of paper I'm just going to, going to get rid of these air bubbles. The inside, in all honesty, it's not that important anyway. The outside is the more, most important. So let's do that next. So to cover the outside, you will need one piece of paper that's going to wrap all around the other side, okay? This here is an Edith Holden page. I really like the, the writing. And it's covering all of outside and it's stopping you can see where it stops so you do kind of need to make sure that your piece is correct size but i also wanted to show you well there's that one and i also want to show you this one my book page wasn't long enough so i kind of you know did a little bit here a little bit here and then just one strip here so you can play around you can have strips you can have strips going this way you can do it many different ways as long as you cover the whole outside all of outside all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this i really like this writing it's left over from the previous one so now i'm just going to check the height that i need so you can see here i'm not going to have it all the way up i'm just going to have a little bit of space over here and a little bit of space over here so i just need to mark myself where i need to trim this off so just about there maybe something like that let's see and there we go and now i'm just going to check if i hold that in place there and then i go all the way around probably could have been a little bit taller you can see how when i went all the way around i have an extra here so i'm just going to double check again how much i need to shorten this so i want to leave space here then when it's wrapped around wrapped around wrapped around you can see it's way too long here so i just need to trim a tiny little bit off maybe just there so another thing to consider at this stage is kind of how much space you want to leave here so if i wrap that around i'm holding it in place basically what we are looking for is to have the same amount of space on both sides and my little thing over here is going to be visible but i'll deal with that when i when i come to that so you can see here is same amount of space on both sides for example you don't want to have all this space here and then a tiny little bit of space here see even that doesn't look bad actually now that i am satisfied with the size of my paper i'm going to apply glue and you really really want quite a bit of glue on there what i mean by quite a bit i don't mean like you need a whole a thick layer of glue you just have to make sure that that glue is applied on every single little piece of the page that you're using most definitely you want glue all the way up to the edge so firstly i apply glue all over and then i spread the glue all the way to the edge because those edges are the most important i mean the eyelets do help keep it in place but if you are not going to use eyelets you want to make sure 
that that book page is not lifting anywhere. All right, glue applied. At this stage, make sure that your writing on the inside and on the outside is the right way up. So that's right way up. And now I'm going to glue this down. Oops. And I'm just slowly, slowly maneuvering everything into place. Now I'm happy with everything and now I'm just going to make sure that everything is glued down. So I'm going to start here, just pressing down, pressing down, and then go all the way around without straightening out the tube. So I'm not going to do this because everything is going to lift. You see that? It's starting to lift straight away. See this here? This is what I was talking about. This is important to be sealed down, to be glued down. So I just kind of come to the edge of my desk. And now you're going to see my fabulous outfit that I'm wearing today. Yes, thank you, ma'am. All right. I come to the edge of my desk and my little crockies. And then I make sure all of that is sealed down. And I'm wearing my apron too. Woohoo! Had I known that my feet would be featured in today's video, I would have worn something a little bit more appropriate. Perhaps something like this. Oh, I need to move that cereal box out of the way. Ruining everything. So ladies, as I was saying, you take your tube, you pop it to the edge of your desk, and then you simply do that. While looking fabulous at the same time. I was too preoccupied with being fabulous that I let this dry without uh, making sure that that's all stuck down. You can see that little gap there. And the gap is not present here because I was focused on what I was doing and not putting high heels on. But I really don't think it's a, uh, a problem, to be honest, so I'm just going to leave it. Plus, I'm going to be tightening that too. So the next thing I'm going to do is just ink all the edges. See, step three, ink all edges. It just makes a difference, but it's not, it's not a must. All right, edges are all inked. It's looking quite nice. See this? Little imperfections all over. So just so you know, you know, the final product, it looks absolutely beautiful and perfect, but there's imp... It's the little things, you know, that you, you're focusing on things like this, for example. This, all of this here is very important, but little imperfections here and there, like the puckering of the page on the inside here, spaces over here, nothing to worry about. Just in case if you're getting frustrated and yours is not looking perfect, I'm trying to say that mine isn't either. So the next thing I have on my list over here is to decorate the inside and it's just basically a sticker I'm going to pop in there. You could do your own thing and go the extra mile, but I think, see that? It's not visible when the little journal is in there, but it's kind of, you know, an extra little step you go to make this thing special. In a way, it also takes away from the imperfections, right? Takes the eye away from the imperfections is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to choose something, anything will do. Maybe a little mushroom, that's probably too wide. It could be something a little smaller, but that's all right. I'm gonna pop that in there. And it went down completely crooked and a little bit of a disaster, but no, I don't think it's a disaster. We can fix it up, fix it up. But I don't know why I am rushing. You know why I'm rushing? Cause I'm still, I'll show you. I'm still wearing those heels and I just wanna go upstairs and take them off. My comfy crocs are upstairs, so just want to finish this part. Just glue it down, glue it down, glue it down. Get it done. There we go. Okay, so the next step is to make a template for holes. Now that sounds all fancy and, and you know, like it's, uh, you know, I don't know what I was going to say something there, but I, I, I'm not sure what it is. Basically, you need a piece of paper that's exactly the same height as your paper roll. You can see that exactly the same height. I personally chose to use to do seven holes. I don't know why I chose seven holes. That's just the way that I decided to go about this project. So I have seven holes on each side. So that's 14 holes. Also keep in mind, if you're going to use eyelets, you will need 14 eyelets, okay? You might want to have just four holes on, on each side, right? 
you might want to have 10. So if you have 10, these little strings are going to be very close together, very close together. If you have four, they're going to be further apart, okay? So it's completely up to you, but I decided to go with seven. And the way that I did this template, I'm just going to perhaps do it on this side. I know you can't really see, but I'm marking myself where I want to poke the holes and have the eyelet. So I want to hold up the top, down the bottom, and then one in the middle here. So you can just have three. You can have, you know, this thing happening, right? Uh, and then, or you can have five. So you'll put one hole in between there and one hole in between there. That will give you five. I'm going for seven and I did this, I didn't measure anything, I was just eyeballing the whole process. So I'm just popping two holes, oh, this is probably, I didn't eyeball that very well, but just to demonstrate, okay, this is my actual template here that I'm using. And I just marked myself a little T to know that that has to be the top. So that's the right way up. So that goes to the top and then I mark myself where I'm going to poke the holes, which is what I'm going to do next. So you can do this by using an awl like this to poke through or because I've already used this template on all, all of my other projects, I have little holes in there already. So what I do is I align it, okay, and then I use my pen and I kind of just mark myself just in there, in there in there it's you know just approximate kind of i mean you don't even need to have a template but i i feel like there's less room for error when you're using a template so here we go i know you can't see but i can see the little dots where i need to poke the holes so i can go ahead and just double check that they're all in a straight line we're trying to be as close to perfection as possible. If you pay very, very close attention, which, I mean, why would you be so pedantic? But if you check my, for example, here, you can see that this hole is higher than this hole. So, you know, I, I it looks like it's perfect. When you look at it like this, oh, it looks pretty perfect, right? But when you start paying attention, you no you notice little imperfections. So we're not striving for absolute perfection, but I think having a template will help to kind of make sure that the holes are as aligned as possible. And now again here, you know, it's a little bit difficult because my template holes are on this side and, you know, I have to have this. If I turn it this way, you see what happens? My top goes down to the bottom so the holes wouldn't be aligned because I didn't measure the holes. I just eyeballed them so they're not very symmetrical. So what I do is pop the template on the inside like that. Perfect. And then I do the exact same thing as before. Here we go. I mark the holes and that pen smudged. Not very good, but it it's fine. Uh, and then I can double check that my holes are aligned. There we go. The holes, you want them to be aligned. Anyway, let's move on to the next step. But you know what? First, I'm taking these off. Where were we, my friends? All right, next step is to punch holes. So you can use, you know, whatever you have. You can use one of these or you can use a crocodile, which I am. I'm going to use a crocodile, but all we're doing is punching some holes. Now you want to make sure you're leaving space all around that hole. If you're going to be placing an eyelet, if you're not going to be using an eyelet, then it's best to move your holes away from the edge because that ribbon might eventually rip through this. Even though this is quite thick, you know, you, you don't want to have it too close to the edge there. I'm going to go ahead and punch all of the holes. All right, there's that one done. Perfect. And now we're going to do the other side, only I can't see the holes because they're on the inside. So just do it this way. Perfect. You should hear my mind. I was like, please don't mess up on the last, these last three holes are the worst because what if I mess up on the last hole? You know, after all this work. Oh, all right. At this stage, where are we? You can add eyelets, which is optional, totally up to you. You can just go straight to the ribbon. If you don't have eyelets, I'm going to add eyelets because eyelets add beauty. See that? Just looks beautiful, doesn't it? But of course, if you don't have eyelets, for example, you could, here's my little prototype. This is when I was trying to work out what I'm going to do in this video. You could, for example, do something like this. I don't know, I've never done it before. Let's see if it's going to work. If you use a Sharpie and you just kind of, oh, look. 
look at that. Well, isn't that just great? Oh, how good does that look? Never crossed my mind up until this very moment. Don't even need the eyelets. I mean, in all honesty, eyelets do add sturdiness. Um, you know, it, it reinforces the holes. But look at that. I'm going to do that in the future for tags and, and stuff where I, I do tend to like to hold my eyelets. So I'm not too keen on using 14 eyelets on each one of these but i have been i've done it on all of them so anyway that's an option so eyelets time all right so this is kind of like where we think about what ribbon do i what color ribbon do i want to use and what color journal cover inside which by the way you don't even need to have a journal cover you can just have a bound pages inside but in any case i'm thinking okay what color ribbon do i want to use you can see here i've done orange love the orange love the brown as well but then the journal inside is a lighter color so the brown is kind of really visible and then we've got this one here so i really don't know what i'm gonna do i love the orange and i'm gonna go for the orange but i used up all of my orange ribbon so i hope i'm gonna have enough here you know gold eyelets would be perfect for this type of thing but i don't have many left so i'm going to do I mean, it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to do this color, which is kind of like a burgundy. And then I'm going to set this eyelet using my cropper doll. I am going to do all of the eyelets, all 14, and I'll be right back. And here we go. Eyelets are done and they are somewhat aligned. They're not, I mean, when you look at it like this, it looks perfect. This is how you should be looking at yourself in the mirror. Oh, aren't I fabulous? But then when you look closer, this is what you shouldn't be doing when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. You start noticing all of the little imperfections like, oh, that's not a great corner. Oh, here we go. Some creases and stuff over here. This eyelid here completely didn't set correctly. Like I said, it over here somewhere. What was I thinking? I have no idea. And, you know, look at this. Oh, this one's too close to the edge. Look how much further this one is away from the edge. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. There's quite a lot of imperfections here, but you know, need I say more? We shall stop being all philosophical now and move on. So the next step is to thread ribbon. You get your ribbon, an approximate amount. If you have more holes, you would need more ribbon, I think. And if you have less holes, you will need less ribbon. So I am thinking that this is not going to be enough ribbon, but I'm really set on using this orange one. And I'm starting my threading from the inside. I'll show you up close in just a moment. So you can see he here how my bottom uh, piece over here is on the inside. It's not sitting on top. That's because I threaded it this way from the inside out rather than from the outside in because if we do this you can do it this you can do it any way you want but what I'm saying is if you do this you see the difference this thread is sitting on top this thread or ribbon I should say is sitting underneath what I have worked out and through my trial and error if I start this way then all of these threads or ribbon parts will be sitting on, to on top right so when I'm putting my journal in, there's not as much ribbon to get caught on to, right? It only really gets caught onto this one, okay? So let me demonstrate. I pop this in, okay? And then generally you can see that it occasionally, not every time, but it catches onto this one. If I start off this way, where this thread is on top and all of the other threads are kind of like coming from underneath, then there's more chance of that journal getting caught onto all of these threads. Ribbon, you know what I mean, okay? Uh, I'm sure there must be a way around it, but anyway, this is what I was kind of like trialing. Do it this way, then I tried doing it the other way, and it took a very long time, let me tell you. So I am sharing with you my research findings, shall we say, and then you can make your own decisions and go about this in any way you want. All right, at this point, we want to make sure that we have an equal amount of ribbon on both sides. And now, this might be a little bit fiddly to film, but bear with me. All right, so here we are. Uh, I'm just going to show you here, just so you, you sort of see what I'm doing. None of this matters if it doesn't matter to you. It matters to me, which is why I did it. 
this side here, okay, all of these threads that are going up are going over the top of the ones here. You can see they're all exactly the same. You might care about this, like I said, you might not, but anyway, it is what it is. And another thing, there's no twisting in the thread, and I like that there's no twisting in the thread. All right, so I'm starting off with my right hand side and I'm going over the top. So I'm not going in this way, I'm going from outside in. Just like that, from outside in, making sure there's no twisting in the cord, there's no, you know, ribbon. And now I like to go over the top of this one. And again, we're just doing outside in, from always from the outside in, there's all sorts of twisting going on, but you can help get the twists out straight away. So you can see this one is underneath, this one is on top. And now I'm just going to repeat the same process until I get up to the very end. So we're going from the outside in. Let's just do one more together. All right, see how there's, there's a twist happening. I'm going to untwist that straight away. Perfect. And now this one here is going over the top. You see, we're replicating the little X's. You don't need to have anything tight, but you know, I mean, this roll is already curved, so it's kind of keeping everything in place anyway. Uh, we're going to tighten later. When you get to the very last two holes, we want the strings coming out, not going in. So we're going to go from the inside out. And by the way, uh, you probably would have noticed by now how I tapered the ends of the ribbon just like that. You can even singe it with the lighter a little bit to make it stiffer. And I do do that later. I mean, you can do it straight away, but it helps with the beads. When we're applying beads, it, that will also help. So from inside out, and here is what we have. All of our crosses are crossing the exact same way. There's no twisting and we didn't tighten anything. We just popped the ribbon through and now we're going to pop this to the side and we're going to do the next step, which is to make the journal. This is very easy journal to make. If you want to have a cover, you want something that's flimsy like this. You, you don't want anything stiff and definitely don't want a hard cover because we will be rolling the journal up to go inside the paper roll. So you can use fabric. This is faux leather that I'm using here, or you can simply skip this step and just have pages. But I'm using, I'm going to have a cover. So the cover needs to be the exact height as the paper roll. And I've already trimmed my cover down to the exact height as the paper roll. So when the journal is made and when I roll it up, it's going to fit perfectly in there. So exact height or slightly smaller. Well, I suppose it could be bigger as well if you wanted to stick up outside of the paper roll. So up to you. Next thing we need is some pages and I have already prepared some pages and you want the pages to be the exact height as the journal cover or as the paper roll or slightly smaller. But you can see my pages are the exact same size as the cover. You can choose the type of paper that you want in there. I'm using coffee dyed and tea dyed pages, and I'm using 22 pages that I will then fold in half. You don't have to have 22. You can have as many as you want. This is the standard size copy paper or computer paper, and I just trimmed it down into three sections. So I marked my first uh, section where I'm going to trim and then my second section, and then this third section ends up being slightly smaller, and that's okay. So my journal has some pages that are slightly smaller, or shorter, I, I should say, you can see over here, slightly shorter, so no big deal, right? So here are my 22 pages, and now I'm going to fold them all in half, all at once. Uh, you can go one by one, I've done it that way too, or you can just simply do this, make it nice and simple, and just fold in half, just like that. So when you have this many pages folded in half, the pages that are on the inside are going to stick out. You can see this here. That's fine, you can leave it as it is, but I like to trim that off so that I have a nice straight edge, so I'm going to do that next. All right, done. Now I have a beautiful straight edge over here, just the way I like it. 
Next thing I'm going to do is bind my pages into the cover that I prepared. So this cover is too large for this journal. Uh, it's too long. You can leave this longer and have it wrap over the top, kind of like a closure. We're pretty much doing something similar to these scroll journals that I did as a tutorial. I'm going to link it in the description box and up here as well if you wanted to have a look. We're not doing the uh, this closure here, but what I wanted to show you, if your cover is exactly the same size as your pages, you don't have the extra flap here. When you roll it up, your pages are visible and I really like that look. However, you might decide to do something like this where you have this extra long piece here. So when you roll up your journal, this becomes a closure that wraps around the journal and then the pages are hidden inside. So it's totally up to you what method you prefer. For this project, I prefer not to have any extra flap over here and I'll tell you why in a moment. But first I'm going to bind this journal in. So I'm going to pop my pages all the way to the edge over here, something like that. And then I'm going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch to bind that into this faux leather cover that I'm using. This is quite thick, there's quite a lot of pages in here, so it can be a little bit fiddly, but I'm not doing any templates, I'm not doing anything, I'm just going straight in, poking three holes, one right here in the middle. There we go, that went through all the pages and the cover, and it's right in the middle, you can't really see, but there it is. I'm going to go about a centimeter or half an inch from the top, just there, poke a hole, there we go, and I'm going to do the same on the bottom. And there we go, same thing on the bottom, and now another thing that you can do to make this process simpler and easier is simply draw yourself a line, something like this, let's see. And then I'm going to just do a little dot on the line corresponding to the holes that I've already punched in my pages. So just a dot there and a dot there and one there. So now I can see exactly where I have to go through with my needle. So I might even poke the holes, make it easier. We're going to start in the middle, go through the cover. And now because I've already poked the holes, I can see exactly where I have to go through next. So we're going through the top hole. I'm going to go through the cover first and then I'm going to go through my stack of pages here. There we go. Now I'll go through my pages down here and through the bottom hole. Everything is flimsy and flailing all over the place, but that's okay because the next thing we're going to do is tighten everything. So I'm going to pull on this middle string here, hold that tight, and then I'm going to go back through the middle hole. And here we are. Done. Just check that the binding is straight. It's somewhat straight. It's not perfect, but it will do. Tighten everything. Perfect. I've got my strings on either side of this middle string here. And now I'm going to pull to tighten and then tie a knot and a double knot and a bow if you prefer. And then we trim that off and close the journal and hope for the best because everything in and contained, it is perfect. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and trim the excess off. So the way that I do that is I'm going to get rid of this one here and I'm going to mark myself somehow, I don't know, something like this. I need to trim all of that off. I can kind of see that, so off I go. All right, that, that one's off and perfect, that's the back. So now again, repeat the process. And here we go, done. A little simple little journal is ready to go inside. We are up to step number 10, roll up journal and slot inside paper roll. And now I'm gonna tell you why I didn't like the extra flap. So you're going to roll up the journal. There we go. And now when we slot it inside, it's going to spring open to fill the available space. If you have that flap, I find that it doesn't really spring open and I want it to spring open just like this. All right, we're going to pop it in there. Okay, and let go and see how it springs open. 
I find because I was trying this of course and, and I left the flap and when I roll it up it kind of stays tight like that it doesn't spring open so there we go that's what we want okay next step is to tighten ribbon all right let's do that and then we're going to do the the knotting and the double knotting and whatnot all right so we're going to start here from the bottom and this is where you decide like how tight do you want this do you want it to be like how much of this do you want to have just for comparison purposes you can see how this is really wide and this is quite tight i really like this kind of look so i'm going to approximately tighten it to how i like it and it's good to go kind of bit by bit rather than trying to like pull it tight from up here there we go how does that look what do you think i like that still a little bit loose over here so now i'm going to go back in just going back up to the top all right that's how it's looking so far and i like that and i'm going to stop there and the next step after the tightening of the ribbon is to die tie a double knot okay so we're doing a square knot over here left over right and then right over left or the other way around so i'm just gonna somehow hold this in place and now tie a knot trying not to twist the ribbons too much let's get closer so i'm starting left over right okay i'm not tightening anything yet but i'm just creating a double knot and then right over left and that's what's kind of happening that knot is going to be secure but what i need at this stage is an extra hand really so i kind of have to Hold the first knot in place while tightening the second knot. And voila, there we have it, a double knot. And now we are going to tie a bow. Getting the perfect bow is not easy. So here are what my bows are looking like. They're not too bad, not too bad. You just tie a bow. But what I do is get a loop and then I go over the top and then through and hope for the best oh that's looking good you know too long so i'm gonna hold this in place and get that bow perfect just fiddle until it's perfect i like that i'm not gonna fiddle too much because what i'm trying to achieve is both of these strands to be sitting down here sometimes when you tie a bow you'll have one of these going up that way the next step is to add a dab of glue so we want to add a little bit of glue just here so that the bow doesn't come undone we want that bow permanently i want the bow permanently on there you might not you might want to skip this step this is more than just a dab of glue but it's on there now and also try not to get it onto your little journal you don't want it stuck on there Sure you'll find something on your floor i found this on my floor so i'm just going to pop that in there while the glue is drying so that it doesn't get stuck there we go ideally you would let this dry uh, before you move on to the next step which is thread beads but i'm not going to let it dry i'm going to thread the beads i kind of left myself just enough ribbon here would have been better if i had a bit more ribbon but here we go I'm making the ends pointy so that it's easier to thread through my tiny, tiny little beads. I might even do this. Be very careful, you know, disclaimer over here. Don't burn yourself. I'm not a medical professional. I am wearing an apron, which gives me some credibility. All right, there we go. Okay, now we're threading the beads. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did over here. I did the exact same thing on all of them. It just minimizes that thinking process. And success. So this is why it's probably better to let the bow uh, dry, the glue dry, because when you're putting the beads on, you might accidentally tag on the bow and then ruin your perfect bow that took you half an hour to create. But I don't have that luxury today. All right, there we go. Repeat on the other side. And here we go, done. Now you will move your beads to where you want them. I want them all the way down. Oh, that's too much down. All right, that's where I want them. And then you tie a knot underneath the beads. There's a little knot. I'm going to use a little tool to help me take the knot right underneath the beads. 
So those beads are not gonna go anywhere. All right, pull tight, do the same on the other side. That's done. And now to finish off, we're going to do a little, like a curved kind of cut. Lovely. And now again, disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional. Don't know what that's got to do with what I'm doing over here, but it's just feels like I need to say it. Be careful when you're using a lighter and cinch those ends. There we go. Just so they don't start to kind of, you know, fray. And there we go. Done. The glue is still drying, which is why it's white, but when it dries, it's going to be clear. And I just wanted to show you when you're taking the journal out, you just pull it out. No signs to it. Even though I am wearing an apron, I am not a scientist. When you're putting it in, you roll it up tighter than you need, you see? And then you pop it in and you just let it spring open and it's going to fill up the space. I love that look. I just love that look. I've used a few different uh, journal cover materials. This is a vinyl here. I use this color, also a vinyl, and I have a little mushroom in there. It's really not coming up in the video as much as it as much as it's visible in, in real life that you can see that sticker inside. You can take this idea many different ways as usual with this kind of stuff but I absolutely love how this looks. The only thing I don't like is that I can't show you properly because they're rolling. They're not supposed to be lying down. They're supposed to be sitting up. I think I might need to go on my stairs again. Maybe we could do something like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little something like this. Oh, yes. Let's be fancy, shall we? Mm -hmm. I'm just playing. All right, enough playing. What I'm going to do next is pop the instructions up on screen. And this way you have them handy. If you need them in the future, you can take a screenshot here. I would love it for you to write me a comment down below and let me know what you think of this video. I love reading your comments. Give me a thumbs up, of course, if you wish to do so. Just tell me. Just tell me. Tell me what's on your mind. What do you think of the toilet paper roll project? Is it cringe? Is it a yay or is it a nay? You know, I have to say it's a 100% yay from me you know i filmed a video that took way too many hours i wore some high heels in the process oh goodness gracious me <gasps> there is a twist okay that's gone now Whew. feel better now so anyway i had fun i hope you did too i hope you'll give this a go and i can't wait to read your comments thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video Bye.